Namaste to all the people of the woodworking community in India and worldwide. I am Shakti and this is Dark Blue Studios. Welcome to our fourth episode set of stories of woodworkers from India. I'm hoping that these stories are helping all those who are listening to them, especially the maker community. If you're a woodworker, if you're a metal worker or a sculptor or any craftsperson, Guys, reach out to me. My links, Instagram and Facebook are going to be in the description so that we can share our journeys and cherish our ups and downs together and help guide each other out whenever needed. Coming back to the video, this is the first part of the question answer set with none other than Indranil Banerjee. I had sent him some questions and he has generously shot them and sent them through. Also, if you like the content, do share it with your friends, do share it with your maker friends, and don't forget to use the hashtag SWIN, that is Stories of Woodworkers from India. I'll leave you now to the video. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one. Yashika, thanks a lot for inviting me to your channel and I think it's a great effort and we really need a channel where you know woodworkers can talk about themselves and the work because we lack that culture in India you know making things is not a part of our culture we are into music into art into writing that sort of stuff but making stuff very few Indians traditionally are into this as a hobby or uh, as a profession, you know, especially the educated uh, middle class people. It's something which the mysteries do, you know, it's looked down upon. So now we are seeing that a lot of people from the middle classes, educated people, they are trying to get into woodworking, into making things, into metalworking, various kinds of uh, crafts. And it's great that you've taken this initiative to uh, uh, familiarize the public with woodworkers. And I thank you for that. And it's great to be on your channel. As for myself, uh, I've been a journalist and a researcher most of my life. I ran a think tank for many years and I worked for various newspapers and uh, channels. And I've always been interested in woodworking, even as a child. But I think in the early days, it was very difficult for someone like me to get into woodworking because one didn't know where to start. There were not enough tools nobody to learn from except the local carpenter who isn't really interested in teaching you so it was very difficult so uh, when i in the uh, about 10 years ago you know when the internet came in youtube started you could buy stuff from amazon we could import tools and a lot of indian companies also started coming up selling good uh, power and hand tools so that's when i uh, really got into woodworking and i'm glad that i did like everybody, I think uh, we all get our inspirations from somewhere down the line, somewhere in our past. I too, I think, uh, got my inspiration when I was a child. My dad was in the army and he would get uh, people to make various things out of wood. I remember when I was small and I used to live in Mathura, uh, my dad built a little dam of wood. I was absolutely fascinated. These guys, carpenters came and they made this little dam with a locking gate and, you know, it would, uh, and they made a mound like a reservoir and then you could lift that gate to release the water. It was absolutely exquisite and I think uh, I was smitten and uh, more than anything, I wanted to make that dam. My dad was not a guy who actually made things with his hands. He was used to ordering others around. Whereas I felt that rather than ordering people around, I should make things myself. So I think that's where the inspiration came from. And then when I grew up, I was always fascinated, always tried to make shells, try to make stuff out of wood, but I didn't really know where to begin. And that was a big problem in India because 
We don't have schools, we didn't have teachers, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have books, we didn't have good tools even in those days. And that's why it was only recently, relatively recently, that I could start woodworking and learn and you know get the stuff that is required to do good woodworking. Starting a blog was very natural for me since I'm a journalist and you know writing comes naturally to me. So I thought I'd share some of my experiences, some of the difficulties that I faced in my journey as a woodworker. So I thought I'd share it with other Indians and, uh, you know, and they might be helped out uh, in a small way by the blog. And over the years, uh, a lot of people have come to the blog. I think a lot of people have been motivated to start woodworking after reading my blog and that's a great feeling. And uh, I really want to continue to do this and in whatever little way I can help the community in India to grow and uh, get better over the years. That's my uh, objective. My uh, YouTube channel called IndieIY is really an extension of the blog. You know, since I already had a blog and I felt that more and more people, including myself, were going to YouTube to watch videos and learn from them. So I thought, uh, you know, I should start uh, making videos myself. It's a little difficult, a little time consuming, and I don't always have the time because I've got other things to do, but it's a good feeling. I think one of the most fascinating uh, things about the process of learning a craft is your own personal evolution and how you react differently to tools, to methods, and how you really uh, look at your craft in a different way from when you started off. For me, technology hasn't been uh, such a major uh, uh, influencer. I don't think technology per se matters. What matters really, in my humble opinion, are your attitudes towards your work, the methods that you use, and uh, the way you use your mind to get, a, uh, get around problems, to solve problems, and then uh, develop an aesthetic which will allow you to make beautiful stuff for other people. I have very strong views on woods and timber because as a woodworker with limited time on my hands, I feel that I like a well-behaved wood. Well-behaved meaning the wood will be stable, the wood will be easy to work and uh, you know won't uh, twist and turn over time. It's absolutely horrible if wood twists and turns or warps over time. Suddenly you spend such a lot of time and effort to make something and three months down the uh, line or six months down the line you find that your whole thing is twisted and bent. So as far as Desi Timbers go, you have a lot of good woods. I've written about it, I've seen, I've checked out a lot of wood. But let me tell you, there is a definite problem with desi woods, and that is the seasoning process. It's not seasoned properly. The wood needs to go through a proper seasoning process. It takes years to dry properly, you know, air drying. And or otherwise, you, if you want to kiln dry it, even there it's a process. You just don't, you know, shove it into the kiln, push a few buttons, and bang, you have your kiln dried wood. It doesn't work that way. It's an art. Drying wood is an art. And unfortunately, in India, we still haven't got it right. Uh, only two woods where uh, people pay attention to uh, good proper seasoning is teak and shisham, uh, to a lesser extent, and to uh, some extent woods like kikar and uh, stuff like that, which is used extensively in the furniture industry. But otherwise, with all the other woods, I'm sorry, but they're using wet wood, unseasoned wood, you know, which is barely a few months uh, uh, cut from a tree and passing it on and it's awful stuff. So what's been happening over the years and uh, I, I've talked to a lot of furniture makers and factories, they today say that, look, we don't care, we are going to use imported timber because it's cheaper in the long run, more reliable and, you know, we know how this wood is going to behave. In the West, a lot of... Uh, uh, effort and uh, care is taken to properly season the wood. Of course, you'll get bad wood, but it's mostly 
kiln dried and of course there is some very uh, nice air dried wood but much more expensive obviously but these woods have been graded they've been dried properly uh, you know so there's a very good draining system and you know what is good stuff what is inferior stuff what is medium grade so when you buy your stuff you can be sure of your uh, what products uh, what kind of wood you're getting and uh, you know putting in money and time and effort into making a piece is worth it so i will usually always go for imported woods and not some uh, you know exotic indian wood which is great but which i can't be sure about of course unless it's steep or shisham and then you have some uh, a few other varieties uh, which are properly seasoned because again i said because the industry uses it otherwise i've had pretty bad experience with uh, <laughs> local timber you asked me about uh, the wood drying process and whether anybody in india uh, has got it right i think uh, it's the government that has got the wood drying right in india you know the forest officials who who deal with lumber and who sell large quantities of it in fact the government is the biggest supplier of timber in india and their method is very simple they cut a tree uh they bring it down to the log level and they just keep it out in the open for years and years and the wood naturally dries it's air dried and then they of course uh, they don't they don't cut it they don't uh, uh, saw it or anything and then they just keep it and finally the wood dries shrinks cracks does whatever it wants to in those years and then they bring it to the auction where uh, people pick them up and then take them back so i think uh, that process yields uh, the best kind of lumber in uh, in my opinion uh, kiln dried lumber which is so popular in the west is not my favorite yes it's very stable uh, yes uh, you can process lumber straight from the uh, forest and you know in a matter of months whereas this air drying process and especially the kind of system we have in our country takes years and years but uh, kiln dried lumber uh, in my view doesn't have those properties that uh, air dried lumber has good air dried lumber is just beautiful to work with it's softer it's easier on your tools uh, and i think it's uh, it has less stress because all the stresses have come out of the wood naturally whereas kiln dried lumber you just speeded up the process uh, artificially and you don't get best, uh, best lumber you know, through the kiln drying process and sometimes the wood that uh, results can be very brittle and can be very hard to work with i remember using some oak and beech which was just awful which had been kiln dried uh, perhaps not properly uh, so it was just uh, just awful whereas you get some uh, teak you get some cp teak which has been naturally uh, seasoned oh it's it's marvelous it just a saw with, with a hand saw you can just cut it uh, like uh, cutting butter and yet it's hard it's durable and uh, it serves you for centuries so that's the difference between uh, you know artificially dried uh, lumber and air dried lumber and uh, uh, why i think that uh, uh, you know uh, i'd go for air dried lumber any day and do we have good kiln dried uh, lumber available in india perhaps but uh, i haven't come across it so far perhaps the bigger people who deal with lots of wood who make a lot of uh, furniture and architectural um, architectural uh, fittings and stuff like that they probably have a better idea about uh, how good the kiln dried lumber in india is i have no clue Uh, as you must be aware that uh, one of the most coveted woods in india is cp teak now cp teak stands for central provinces central provinces and berar was an area created by the british this comprised parts of uh, today's madhya pradesh chatisgarh uh, and a bit of odisha i think and uh, 
some other parts. So this was this huge area and it was mostly wooded and it was dry and hilly kind of terrain. And the best teak came from this part of India. And the reason for this teak being so famous was the wood absorbed a lot of those minerals. And so you had these flecks of these very fine mineral deposits in the wood, in the teak. So when you planed and polished it, it glinted and it shone. So it was a brilliant wood and it continues to be. So I made uh, two or three expeditions uh, to that uh, area in Chhattisgarh, uh, which happens to be Naxal infested by the way. And uh, I spent uh, several days there in the forest and in a lot of these, uh, all these wood is collected by the government and sold in government auctions. And you need a license, at least you needed one in those days to buy the wood and transport it to wherever you wanted to. And uh, it's fascinating to see the different kinds of woods that are available, yellow wood, red wood, white woods, and traditional uh, woods, some of which I don't even know the names. But the most important, of course, was teak. And that teak is a wonderful teak. It's, it lies in those government uh, forest areas where they cut it and they keep it for at least a couple of years and allow it to dry properly and then they sell it and then you're supposed to saw the stuff and again air dry it for several months more to stabilize the wood. So that's been my experience. So if you want to go and see forests and see some lovely woods, go to Chhattisgarh, go to Madhya Pradesh and to these forest areas and of course there's also lovely uh, you know, wildlife reserves such as Ghana and Pech. Uh, where you can see tigers as well. So, you know, tigers and teak, great combination. Try it.